Well, hello to you, my beautiful friend, and welcome to the podcast. So today is a surprise podcast. Surprise to me. (laughs) Surprise to me because I came down here to my office this morning at 5 a.m. fully prepared to just do my little, you know, daily devotional from the Seekers Method and, um, and to start preparing for a thinner circle call later this morning. And wouldn't you know it, God had other plans. Um, so those, for those of you who have been following me for a minute, um, you know that in 2021, in January, I decided that I was going to take a year and read the in, entire Bible from front to back because I'm probably just like most of you. <clears throat> I've read it all, but I've never read it in its entirety from cover to cover. And so in January of 21, I started reading it, um, you know, just right at the very beginning and as of right now, um, I don't even know what, whenever, 2022 right now, I'm only in Judges. <laughs> Why am I only in Judges? Is it because I can't read the Bible? No, it's because I can't read the Bible without writing a podcast. I can't read the Bible without writing a reel. If you're not following me on social, on Instagram or <clears throat> YouTube or any of the places, um, all of my content just literally comes straight from God's Word. Um, and so I don't have, you know, seven hours a day to just devote to reading the Bible. And so quite literally today was no different because this morning, all I did was open up Judges 10 and, um, I was in Judges 10 and I, this, this scripture just hit me and it was powerful because this is where the Lord is, you know, he's just really kind of angry at the Israelites because they just cannot, they can't stop, they can't stop doing what they want to do and listening to God. And I couldn't help but think, you know what? Oh my goodness. We're just like them. And I always think that and podcasts always come from that. And so this morning, my podcast is sponsored by Judges 10, all of Judges 10, because it's all about, you know, how we don't necessarily a lot of my clients, I see this is true, want to see God as our weight loss solution. And so we're going to be unpacking this a little bit. Now, what I'm going to share with you today, I want you to know that as I was writing it, felt like a divine download, like guidance from God, almost as if, and this is hard for me to even put into words because I don't like talking this way. And I don't like talking this way because I came from the New Age movement. And in the New Age movement, you know, all the things are wrong. And I don't even want to talk about it. Um, But a lot of times, because my relationship is so close to God and I'm so eternally focused, a lot of times what I share, um, I feel like is from God guiding me, you know. And, and I see it in my own life materializing. So I don't doubt it. I mean, I'm one of the, I'm in one of those situations right now where if I hear God say to me, do not eat that, I don't eat it. And then when I hear don't eat that sherry or don't drink that, and I do it, I see the consequences. So I'm at that point now where I recognize that still small voice that I still, you know, pretend isn't talking to me at times. You know, I'm not perfect. I have not arrived. I'm God's not finished with me yet. But this morning, everything I've written out for you today in the podcast, God told me to share it. And I want you to know it's very straightforward. It's very candid. Um, Some of it it might seem like it's a bit PC, but I'm only sharing it with you in the way that I've received it. And through a turn of events this morning, God took me to a scripture When I was feeling a little bit apprehensive about recording today's podcast, I thought, oh, I'm not used to being such a straight talker in my podcast. John took me, no, God took me to John 12, 49 and 50. And this is how I know it's God. Okay. This is how I know this message could change your life because this isn't Sherry Capitalist speaking right now. This podcast that you're about to hear is like a God cast, right? Like it's from him. And how do I know it? Because he took me to John 12, 49 and 50. And this is what it says. For I did not speak on my own, but the father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. I know that his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the father told me to say. I mean, what? I was in Judges. 
I ended up reading this in John 12, 49 through 50. God confirmed and substantiated that this message is from him for us. Because like I said, girl, he is not finished with me yet. So what we're going to talk about today is something I'm seeing in the world. <clears throat> and that is that, you know, what people don't want God to be the answer for their weight loss, right? Like they don't. I mean, I I see this firsthand. Women come to me, whether you're a VIP or you're in the thinner circle, whatever it is, um, you know, women come to me all the time and they just say to me, you know, Sherry, I just want to be told what to eat. I just want to know when to eat, what to eat and all of that. I want to have a food plan. I want it spelled out like completely plainly. So it's foolproof, but they don't want God Like they don't want God involved in their weight loss. And it's because going to God doesn't seem possible for them. Like they've either never seen God move before in their lives or they aren't quite yet ready for the conviction of his truth even on their weight loss journey. Does that make sense to you? Like it's almost one of those things where people don't know God And so therefore they think he's not possible. Like he can't possibly help them on weight loss or people do know know God, but they're not really that willing to lose weight because they know that God is going to awaken them, awaken them to the truth. It's, it's like, you know, I mean, so hopefully that makes sense to you. It's like people want to, they kind of just want to be like other people when it comes to weight loss. They want, they want what they see right? Like, oh, she's doing the keto diet. So I'm going to do the keto diet because she had these results, despite the fact that she's only 24 and you're 49, (laughs) right? You know what I mean? People want to be like other people. They want to fit in. They want to, they want what they can see. And it's scary to think that God could really have, like that God could really have a journey for them. That's going to require real effort. It's going to require growth. And it's going to require God's nearness. And as a result, like they start to wonder, like, could I ever even really have success with God on my weight loss journey? But think about this. Like a parent, God disciplines us, right? And is, should you expect that discipline's going to hurt? Yeah. And a lot of people don't want to seek God for weight loss because they're worried about saying goodbye to fun. So you might be thinking, yeah, Sherry, like what about all the fun foods that I eat? Listen, weight loss with God or weight loss without him is going to require discipline. And discipline is never fun, right? In the moment. But if you want to lose the weight you need, you're going to need a disciplining parent if you're already fearing and dreading the discipline, right? Like, and as far as the fun thing is concerned, like, Can you have fun? Yeah. But if saying goodbye to wrong foods makes you sad because wrong foods equals fun to you or joy, um, you know, with food, um, if joy with food is a problem and you're worried that God is going to take away your joy, then God may need you right now to awaken to the fact that you need to seek him over just a diet because food should not be fun and it should not be your source of joy. Food can be fun. It can be exciting and you can look forward to it. But if it has ensnared you and you are a slave to it and you're addicted to it and it is what you run to over God, then God might need you to come to him over constantly go, going, to the, going to the food and whatever the substance that you might be running to. In my case, it was alcohol. You will never correct your thinking about the foods that you run to and the joy that you experience if you equate it to fun and joy. And you know what else? You can't do it on your own. I mean, God showed me this firsthand. God showed me how to do this. Like through his discipline, I finally was able to break the bondage of my food, the stronghold that it had on my life. I mean, I had a wrong relationship with food for so long. I had a wrong relationship with alcohol for so long. And I ran to it for what really only God could provide. I mean, like, you know, joy 
and food, right? Like I would run to food for joy. I would run to food for comfort. I would run to alcohol for stress relief, right? For after like a bad, hard day. Whenever I was really sad, I would run to food and alcohol. But with God's presence, with his presence, I experienced his parental discipline. And the results were the fruit of the Spirit in my life. And God began to become my source. He became my source for everything, like for my joy. My joy came from him. My comfort came from the Holy Spirit because I started practicing running to the Holy Spirit instead of gossip or food or alcohol. God became my source of peace. When I felt unsettled instead of eating through the unsettledment, he became my source of patience when weight loss wouldn't just happen overnight. Like he became my source of self-control, all of it, because he started to become so powerful in my life that I started to materialize the fruits of the spirit in my life. And so on my weight loss journey, I saw just how wrong, and this might pertain to you, how wrong my thinking was and how I had continued to believe thoughts that kept me fat. I mean, I know that's, that's just straight talk, but I did. I believed wrong thoughts that kept me fat. I mean, I saw reasons for why, like I needed certain foods and why I needed to run to my Cabernet Franc and all of the, all of those things. And I justified those reasons until God showed me that they were all just weak and pathetic human excuses and how I was weak and how I needed him. And it wasn't until, until I had my, my encounter with with him, like with the Holy Spirit in 2015 in my bedroom closet, that like I saw God and I saw his ways of doing things in my life as an option for my life and even in weight loss. And until then, I had tried to lose weight the world's ways, like totally and completely, much like how you might be doing it. I, I had tried to do it on in my own strength with all of my old thoughts and my, you know, all of my own ways that were just completely unsuccessful. And that's when I learned how to take my thoughts captive and to see my reasons as excuses and to see them really in the light of God's truth. And this is when self-discipline and obedience began in my life. And this is when God's strength began to make me like to truly flourish in an area, like in a part of my life where I had previously completely failed miserably. Like I saw the weakness of my flesh when God illuminated my eyes to his truth. And I saw the weakness of my flesh and how I needed to count on God more than I had just been counting on myself in the world. The world, the world never pointed to God in my weight loss journey. Like, have you ever heard anybody speak as crazily as I speak in terms of like pointing to God for the answers? I mean, the world never pointed to God for me for my weight loss journey. God, God was never like, when I look back on it, he was never like the answer for my weight loss journey. I mean, I think about it and it was like, okay, you know what? God was good for helping me when I had a friend whose child was dying of cancer. And God was good for helping me when, um, you know, I had a problem in a relationship and I needed his healing in a relationship. Maybe something wrong was spoken in a friendship, right? And he was good enough to go to, and you might relate to this, like he's good enough for us to go to if we want to get out of a speeding ticket, right? <laughs> or we're up for a promotion, whatever it is. But is God really good enough to touch our food, right? What about disciplining us as adults? Like that's, that's like the best part of being an, an adult, right? Like making your own choices. I mean, when you agree to that, like that's the best part is we don't really kind of have to answer to any authority or do we? And how's it going for us when we're not answering to an authority? And why wouldn't we see God as an authority over our lives with our food and what we're eating and what we're watching and all of these things, right? It's because the world has fooled us. We love to make our own choices until we can't. And so like, how's that going for you? Like, how are you doing with making your own choices, even in the space of weight loss? Like, can you eat what you should when the thing that you shouldn't eat is even an option? Probably not. Like, you need a savior. And even more than you need a savior, you need to give Jesus lordship 
over every single area of your life because it's the right, it's your right to choose wrong that is your problem. Like if you want to change, if you want to change and you want to lose the weight already, you're going to need to do harder things that are likely not going to be easy for you to do in your flesh. You're going to need to call, you're going to need to call in for some backup. And I want you to know right now that that backup is in the spirit. That doesn't mean it's easier, but that backup is in the spirit because your weight loss battle is a part of your life. And God's word tells us in Ephesians that you're not just in a physical battle here, sweetheart. There's a spiritual battle. Your weight loss battle is a part of your spiritual battle, but you've only been fighting it physically. And so what you may not know that nobody is telling you except for this weird lady right here who has been assigned the job of being a Christian life coach for weight loss. You don't have a weight loss problem. You have a lordship problem, okay? An obedience problem. You are mastered by your thoughts. You're mastered by your feelings. You're mastered by your habits. You're mastered by your moods. You're mastered by your emotions, your feelings, and your every single impulse. You're weak around temptation and the enemy has convinced you that you will never lose the weight. And so you're believing it. And guess what you do? You collect evidence to substantiate it. See, look at that. I couldn't say no to Taco Bell just now. I'm never going to lose this weight. Or see, look at that. Here I am drinking alcohol again. I'm destined to be fat and overweight like my Aunt Martha, whatever it is. You can lose the weight. What was meant for your harm can be, and listen to me, and will be used for your good and for God's glory. But you have a part on this journey. God is your father. He is a disciplining parent. And he's a disciplining parent who loves you and wants amazing things for you. But it's his way that you have got to follow, not your way. God right now, God is using even my weight loss journey right now to awaken me to the to the sanctification practice process of my salvation. And he's wanting to bring your attention to this as as well. All right. I'm going to take a quick commercial break so I can get a drink of water and I'll be right back. Hey there. Welcome back. All right. So for me on my weight loss journey, like when I set out, obviously you probably know this, if you've seen my testimonial and how, you know, the Holy Spirit convicted me in my bedroom closet and awakened me and how, you know, Jesus asked me a question in my heart that I didn't know the answer to, and he gave me the answer and God just profoundly woke me up. I stopped seeking this, stopped seeking the gym and I started seeking him even in weight loss. And so when I started seeking God and applying his word to my life in the exact way that I teach in the seekers method, because the seekers method wasn't something I set out to write. It wasn't something that I set out to do. I never intended to become a Christian life coach for weight loss. I was in corporate America making six figures, driving the designer cars, carrying the designer bags, living in the world, going to yoga, drinking alcohol, worshiping idols, worshiping the lust. I was doing all of the horrible things until God got a hold of me. And when he did, he changed me and he positioned me to stop doing what I was doing and being against him. And to start becoming a soldier in his army. To like stand up and to see myself as part of the remnant. Who like blindly and profoundly seeks to please God. And desires to obey him in all areas. And so when I started doing that. When I started seeking God and applying his word to my life. In the exact way that I teach in the seekers method. That is how God illuminated my eyes to the fact that I was also in a spiritual battle as much as I was in a physical battle. And he showed me when, where, why, and how to go higher, how to do better, how to overcome my old self so that I could, I could step out of the ways that I used to struggle in my flesh and I could start stepping into ways and obeying in the spirit, right? He showed me how to like crucify my old self so that I could stand up resurrected in the new me, in the the divine portion of me whose spirit was born again so that I could learn to be led in the spirit. None of that was easy and none of it, let me just tell you, this is a word for somebody. None of it was quick. All of it, all of it required discipline. All of it required self-control. All of it required that I stopped worshiping comfort. All of it required that I stopped being mastered by the God of my stomach. 
all of it required that I prioritize him, that I know him, that I, that I knew him in a way that I could begin to recognize his voice so that I could yield to his voice versus my own, versus the lies of the enemy, right? And and what I know now, like at this point on my journey since 2015 when he woke me up, what I know now is losing losing weight and seeking to weigh a certain number and to look a certain way is just for the world. But when you prioritize, like you really like wake up and see what matters. When you prioritize a relationship with the God of this universe, like the one who created the heavens and the earth, when you wake up and you prioritize a relationship with the God of this universe and you put your faith in Jesus Christ as your savior, savior, weight loss just happens. And it just happens as you begin to transform mentally and emotionally and even spiritually. No one ever told me this. So I'm I'm doing it for you right now. I'm telling you this today. Who you are becoming is so much more important than just being thin. Stop following the world. Stop believing that you've got to see it before you'll ever believe it. If God is changing me and the women in the Seekers Method, he will do it for you too. But faith requires that you believe before you receive. So like what could change if you began to believe that the one who knit you together in your mother's womb could also be the one who showed you, could also be the one who showed you how to do the hard things in your life, even in weight loss. Like what could change if you believed before you received? And where could you be? Like right now, think about yourself, where you are right now. Where could you be in a year if you trusted God over your thinking patterns that you have in this moment? What could come of your entire life if you let God transform you from the inside out instead of seeking another diet, seeking another quick, lose weight quick program, right? Today, I just, I just want to awaken your mind today to the possibility that God's ways are the best, even for your weight loss journey, that if you were to submit to his authority, you would not only see transformation, you would not only see this transformation right now, like bring heaven to earth kind of thing, you would also see transformation eternally. If you don't know how to do any of this, you don't know how to be eternally focused instead of temporally focused, just follow me. Like that's all you got to do. There's so much I share for free. Keep listening to my free podcast, even in Weight Loss with Sherry Capilla. Go on Amazon, spend $30 on a book that could change your life. This book is not a how to lose weight book. This is how to gain life because I ask you Christian life coaching questions that help you to decouple your dieter's mentality from your thinking, old thinking patterns, and instead start to couple your faith to your thinking. Get the book on Amazon. It's called this. What is it called? I don't even know. I got to look at it. I don't, where is it? Um, I think it's called the Seeker's Method for Weight Loss. Just look up Sherry Capilla on Amazon, whatever. Or you know what? Invest in yourself. Go to my website, sherrycapilla.com. Join the Seekers Method the next time it opens. I mean, I don't let everybody in and I, it's not open all year because when you're in the Seekers Method, girl, I walk you through this. You can even hire me as a VIP coach and I will show you this, but you don't have to do any of it. I give away so much free stuff as the ministry from my heart. All I want you to know is you've got to do something. Start prioritizing God above this world. Your your ability to be obedient, and you know this, is probably very weak. Like you need God's help to obey because your flesh is so strong. It's so strong because you've been practicing making it stronger every single day. And whatever we practice, we get good at. So you need to learn how to break your, your, your body and your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotion. you got to learn how to break that strength so you can be strong in the spirit to yield. Your, your obedience is what's weak right now and you need God's help to obey 
so that you can overcome your strong flesh and to recognize that if you are actually even going to be strong enough to ask God to help you and yet you continue to live mastered by your flesh, doing all the things in the way that the world has shown you and taught you and that you've come to love, you're continuing to live by the world's standards and by the world's values. And this is exactly what got you where you are. God will never fail you. God will never leave you. He will help you to do all of this, but you've got to do it his way. So stop putting God outside of your daily actions and instead put him at the center of every single thing you do. Then, and only then, you will see the blessings for your obedience, even in weight loss.